Okay. Hey. Oh, Dave. Holly. Hello. Oh, ho- oh, Holly, when'd you get here? Can we start that over? Sure. <laughs> Good <laughs> morning, Dave. Morning, Holly. What's going on? Welcome to the morning breakfast show. <laughs> Welcome to What Difference Does It Make? Oh, I'm sorry. We're The podcast. We're doing a podcast. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. What difference does it make? Correct? Correct. Okay. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are in a rather somber week in music. Uh, it's not, I mean, it is somber, but it, it's been nice in that I've been, and I'm sure you have, been listening to the music of Eddie Money and yes. Rick Ocasek, or Kasich. Yes, Rick I'm here. Rick as, as I believe it is, his name is. So for 40 I, years, I've been saying Ocasek. I have too. Now have everybody too. is saying Ocasek. I saw Stephen Colbert did a wonderful tribute to him, but he kept mm-hmm. calling him Rick Ocasek. Mm-hmm. But then, I, of course, I go on YouTube to figure out how to say his name. And in this little video clip, he says, hi, I'm Rick Ocasek. Hi, I'm Rick Ocasek, and I turn confusion into a virtue. Oh, okay, so we got the weird, we got the, the I, official. I believe so. Okay. So thank you for that. So it is Rick Ocasek, but I will probably flub that up and say uh, Ocasek once in a while. We'll know who you're talking about. All right. We do know Eddie Money. Eddie Money. It's pronounced Money. Money, but his his uh, born name, birth name was Mahoney, right? Um, yeah, here's a fun fact his name is Mahoney. His mother is uh, Jewish. I know. I just saw that. I had no idea. He was a police officer. I thought he was yes. always Irish Catholic or you know something like that. But uh, apparently, he's one of the chosen. <laughs> he is officially one of the chosen ones. Yeah, but he was he was only on the police force for two years because music was it for him. Of course. Yeah. Uh, policing was a gateway drug to rock and roll. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he he said in uh, he told Rolling Stone in an interview that it, he would have been a very lenient cop. I would imagine so. Yes. I would imagine there was a couple incidences where Eddie was uh, talking to police for some <laughs> reason, one way or another, for some indiscretion. On the receiving end. On yes. the receiving end. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sure he was thinking, if this was me, I would you know, give him a free pass or something. Yeah. Or maybe he had a way of talking to uh, to cops to get out of situations. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, so if it's not obvious to our, our audience, we're dedicating this show to Rick Ocasek and Eddie Money. Yes, indeed. Uh, they uh, were tremendous artists that we, I mean, I, I, I grew up listening to Eddie. Icons and huge, huge influences, huge yeah. influences. And sometimes it's unfortunate. I We've talked about this with other artists where you don't, I mean, I've always appreciated them, but I kind of, with Eddie Money, I, I was a fan, but I kind of, you know, I, I don't want to say I lost interest. I didn't, I didn't follow his later years, but now going back as we've done, I really feel like I should have appreciated him more. Uh, yeah, he had a, an amazing amount of hits. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, who was a who was the bigger artist according to Billboard? Was it Eddie Money or is it the Cars? It's funny. I would say the Cars, but you're probably going to tell me Eddie Money. That is correct. It yeah. is Eddie Money. Eddie yes. Money was the um, in the 20th century was the 175th biggest artist. Wow! And that's bigger than Bob Dylan, Steve Miller, In Excess, Dolly Parton, REM. In the cars. Oh, shit. Is that based on, on number one hits? Those or, are based or... on singles. Okay. Uh, um, singles. Yeah, which isn't surprising. I mean, I, I remember Eddie Money albums. You know, I remember the the first album was, mm-hmm. well, actually, my dad bought it because he loved the song Two Tickets to Paradise. And I was like the first rock album that I think we both shared. Like, oh, you you like this. I, I like this too. <laughs> That's bonding. And that was 1978. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that was, I think that was probably the first rock and roll album that my dad, you know, dad goes to Licorice yeah. Pizza and bought the, bought the Eddie Money debut album. But for the most part, I mean, I, you don't really think of Eddie Money in albums. You think of singles. Yeah. I mean, he had, he had a lot of them. He had, you know, Take Me Home Tonight, made it up to number four. Yeah. He never had a number one hit. The biggest hit was Take Me Home Tonight in 1988. Is it cliche that that's my favorite Eddie Money song? No, not at all. As we talked about, that's, you know, the singles. You don't necessarily know a lot of the, the albums. Yeah. Um, What's then, your favorite song? Was, Sorry, you're giving me statistics. And oh, I want to yeah. know your favorite song. Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> Go. it's always Two Tickets to Paradise. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah, that's what reeled it's you iconic. into Eddie Money. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody, You, it's still, you know, as you go down the rabbit hole, you start the YouTube rabbit hole. Yeah. You see it on King of Queens. 
Um, <laughs> you know, they were they used that. They Eddie Money was on that that show, and Two Tickets to Paradise was kind of like the theme of the of the show. Uh, they played a lot of that, and then uh, you see Homer Simpson singing Two Tickets to Paradise, <laughs> and then you watch the Geico commercial. He's he was running the Eddie Money travel agency. <laughs> no, and, he didn't. And, and declaring, that. "Hey, I've got Two Tickets to Paradise." He's singing the song. <laughs> okay. That's a good idea. No, I mean, yeah. obviously, Eddie had a great sense of humor. Yeah. You know, he was he was in on yeah. the joke. It wasn't like, you know, we're making fun of, fun of you. These are iconic songs. This means a lot to to the world. Yeah. He yeah. recognized it. And he's. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it, it you know, it's making it's kind of humorous, but it's acknowledging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was this was and is an iconic song that everybody knows. Yeah. Yeah. God, there were so many. I mean. And that wasn't even in the top five of his songs. Two tickets. It was, uh, Baby Hold On was was a bigger song. Is that true? Wow. I, you know, I'm just basing this on. on I'm just basing. Oh, I'll try that. Sorry, that was. Are you okay? Are you gonna? Are we gonna have to do a memorial for you? I dropped my pen. Oh, you might okay. have to do a memorial okay, for my pen. Okay, wasn't okay. Because I'm marking up my notes as we as we speak. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure on the rock charts it was bigger. It's funny because you think of Eddie Money as a rocker, but he had pop hits. It was and so baby baby hold on was made up to number eleven. That was his that was his uh his first hit, mm-hmm. big hit. Um I think uh two tickets didn't made it at uh twenty two. Up to twenty two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it wasn't even top twenty, but you know, it's still iconic on, on rock radio. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that was one of the songs on rock radio and, and top forty. It was there's a, there weren't a lot of songs that could cross both of those genres, you know, like Popular yeah, you're right and about rock. that. Yeah. But Eddie and actually the Cars were both in that that category. Yeah, but we probably first heard them on rock radio and on Campbell no. West or KMT. No? I no. No. I clearly no, I, I was listening to it when I was twelve. KHJ? Yeah, KHJ, KFI. Yeah, KHJ, you're probably right. Wow. Oh, I am, yes. No, that's that's exactly where I heard these songs first. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Baby Hold On was his third biggest hit. Uh, he had a song in 1990, Peace in Our Time, made it up to number 11. And I want to go back. He, he performed it on Letterman in 86. Um, and then kind of like as a surprise. And he looks, he's singing in 86. He looks like Glenn Fry in 1986. <laughs> he's got, and he looks straight out of Miami Vice. It's hilarious yeah. to see it. Um but then um, during the middle of the show, uh, Ronnie, or middle of his song, Ronnie Ronnie's comes right strutting now. out and, and with the huge 1980s hair that and, curl, uh, and yeah. sings uh, sings the, the, her part of Be My Little Baby and doing the oh, oh, oh. And it was great. And just seeing the smile on Eddie's face that he's singing the song mm-hmm. with her. It was, it was, it was wonderful. That's, it's kinda, that's a good thing to pull up and watch. Do you subscribe to the Left Sets letter? Bob Les Sets? Oh, know? I don't subscribe, but I do read it. I read it on occasion when other people post. Yeah. Yeah. So they... People write in all the time to it, and so when Eddie died, there people wrote it. He wrote a tribute, and so other people wrote in. This is there's a couple letters I liked. Uh, this this one is um, uh, my name is Cindy Fitzgerald. I'm the ritzy sorority girl Ed mentions in one of the interviews regarding the genesis of Two Tickets. Anyway, I am not so ritzy, but Eddie and I have had an almost fifty year love affair. Baby, hold on, and Two Tickets are about my mother trying to split us up. I created the brand Eddie Money, suggesting to him that just dropping the ah from Mahoney was fairly honest, and everybody likes money, right? There is no nicer guy than Ed, and as you might imagine, I am totally brokenhearted. Those early songs were real life for us, and Ed would often give my mother credit for his career. She helped, but it was his talent, his very hard work, a bit of luck, and timing, and you know what? It was his destiny. It really was. So that was uh, that's from Sidney Fitzgerald, who uh, had a relationship with Eddie, and Eddie's muse. That's really, that's, it's nice to hear this stuff. You almost wish, I mean, how you would have felt if you had known these stories. Oh, yeah. As you were listening to the songs. I did not know that, did you? No. Yeah. No. no. Um, yeah. But yeah, and he was, uh, you know, there was a couple other letters. There was, um, this is from, I don't know if, uh, you know, on Facebook or, you know, I'm sure a lot of your friends are in radio. I'm sure a lot of, you saw a lot of photos of people with Eddie Money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so this is this was from John Michaels. He says, like anyone who was in radio during a certain period, I had multiple encounters with him. And mm-hmm. for most of it, I wasn't even in a large market. Every radio friend I have on Facebook posted a picture of themselves with Eddie. He visited every station. He called everybody. He remembered names. A radio pal noted that he could have been a VP at Columbia because <laughs> he, he got promotion with a G, capital G-O-T, got promotion mm-hmm. better than anyone. 
old school promotion, shaking hands and kissing babies, mentioning station call letters and Jock's names when he was on stage in their city, and always saying thanks for the airplay. The critics may not have understood, but we did. He seemed, it seemed genuine. It always seemed genuine. People genuinely liked him, and he seemed genuine doing that stuff. I think so. I was, yeah. at, a, I was at a convention that mm-hmm. was for radio and music supervision, and this was like maybe 10 years ago. And so he was probably there mostly for music supervisors. But, you know, he was there. He yeah. got it. He's like, I yeah. need to say but hello the to these people. Of it, but it's, a, it, it's important, but it's just a part of your life. It's like integrated into your life. Yeah. But, you know, but it comes natural. I mean, some, yeah. you know, some rock stars are like, you know, above it all. But Eddie understood it. It's, it's about. Yeah. Or they're doing a job and rolling their eyes. Right. It's not just, there's more to, you know, there's, there's, you have to sell the music too. Yeah. I mean, you could be an artist, but there is a lot of marketing to the job. And, uh, and Eddie got it. And yeah. so, you know, so that's, that's kind of cool that everyone got a picture with Eddie. He got it. He knew what to do, <laughs> you know, how to, how to sell his songs. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you ever watch his reality show? I never did. Did you see it? Nope. I've never seen it. Never. It seems uh yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a reality show person. I've never yeah. watched any of those, but it's some of them. I don't know. He just seems he might be an interesting character. Yeah, it might be something to pull up and, yeah. and watch, but yeah, I'm not I think I watched a little bit of uh I watched the Osbournes. Yeah. I think they interesting different than Ozzy, but yeah. Yeah, I mean it's the same. You know, there's Gene Simmons has mm-hmm. has his show. So yeah, Eddie got one of his. I'm, I'm sure it was. It surprised me though because he always struck me as a little more low key. You know, even with the you know promotion and you know being out in the field, so to speak, he still seemed more of a low. I mean, yes, he was a rock star, I guess, but just low key. I wouldn't have guessed he would have had a reality show. Yeah, well, I, as I mentioned, he got it. You need to keep your name out there, and that was yeah. this was a uh, something to keep his name. Out in the in the public eye, you know, yeah. people, your kids, they don't know who Eddie Money is, but they probably know two tickets to paradise for sure. Yeah, I'm sure if you mm-hmm. play, they might not know the name Eddie Money, but they they know the song. Yeah, and you know that's that's because of Eddie Money getting out there and you know making sure that the, that the music o- always got heard. Yeah, <laughs> I was reading. Did you uh, do you know anything about his wife? No, Lori Money, which I guess she went by that name too. Uh, they got married in 1989. Mm-hmm. She said that she did not know who he was at the time. No mm-hmm. matter, you know, I guess they had met in 1985. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I felt like from day one, we know, you know, from the first note of the first song, we knew who he was. Well, sure. But if you, Eddie Money walks up to you in a bar, would you know, hey, you're Eddie Money? He might, well, yes, I inter- would. If he introduces himself as Eddie. Yeah. She also <laughs> said she used to get him mixed up with John Mellencamp. I can understand. <laughs> yes. And the left sets letter, speaking of money, he always, he signed it at a dollar sign. Oh, that, really? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> you know, what else could that be? Money takes too long to spell. Eddie Dollar. Eddie Dollar. <laughs> so anyway, he did, he died of uh, esophageal cancer. Esophageal. Esophageal. He I di- think that's the correct pronunciation. Yeah, it was esophageal cancer. Donations on behalf of Eddie Money can be made to the Eddie Money Cancer Research Fund at the USC Norris Comprehensive Cancer Center. Let's take a break before we start talking about Rico Cassick. Good idea. Welcome back to What Difference Does It Make? That was that was sad to hear. And then like a, a few days later, we got news that uh, Rick Ocasek mm-hmm. had passed away. Yeah. Not similar artists, but the same, like similar impact. It was. Although 78. I think, I think, 78 was yeah. the debut of both of these artists. He, they had a, a, a huge impact, Rick Ocasek. Huge impact. I always think about, I have a group of friends, my... my, my uh, <laughs> a group of guys that I've been friends with since pretty much elementary school mm-hmm. that I can't think of the cars without thinking about them. Yeah. 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 So it has, it's a doubly good association because I love the band. I love Rick Ocasek. Sorry. Ocasek's persona. And I love my boys. <laughs> All right. Shout out to uh, Holly's to, crew. To, 
<laughs> Jeff, it? Michael, and Adam. Okay. Was this the, the first album or what was the, the album? From the first album. Yeah. I was going to ask if you ever, did you ever see the Cars live? Like in concert? Did you take the crew to see them? I never, I don't think I've ever seen them. Yeah. And Have you? Are, no, I never did. I'd always heard, and as I, I've watched performances as I went down. Yeah. They were not the most dynamic performers. No, no. So it was never, uh, it was, you know, kind of studio wizardry, I think, uh, the magic that they made. Magic. Yes, Speaking exactly. Of, uh, was you were going no, for that. No coincidence I said that. But he he still had a present. Rick Ocasek still had a And Ben Orr, you know, who was a cutie. But, uh, um, indeed. But Rick Ocasek had a presence that still... Uh, it still brought you in. You're still fascinated by him. And well, I know it wasn't a great stage show, but. Yeah, well, that's where I think the videos came in. Yeah. Uh, it was a good replacement because they made iconic videos. Very creative. Just, oh, and say, yeah, they got the MTV Video mm-hmm. Vanguard Award. Yep. W- well deserved. Yes. Yeah, because we, uh, yeah, we grew up on those. Those songs are mm-hmm. amazing. Um, can we talk about his age for a second? Because <laughs> I'm seeing 70 and 75. Okay. Um yeah, so he was 75. I looked on the New York Times, the obituary. They actually had a little blurb about was, was Rick's, because they were panicked because they, they had to print something, and they kept seeing 70, 75. Mm-hmm. Um, but they did the research, <laughs> and, uh, and he, was, he was 75. They, they, like on yearbooks, like in 63, I think he graduated high school or okay. something like that, which is amazing in that, it took a long time for Rick Ocasek and the um, to make it big. He was in his thirties, and I think he was probably thirty four. This might be a record label thing. Like you know what? Let's just say you're twenty nine instead of thirty four. Yeah. It makes you sound you know you're still in your twenties. Um, so I think that was part of it. But okay, I trust the New York Times. Yeah. So he, yes, he is definitely seventy five. Yeah. I think it was him and Ben Orr were both the, uh, the kind of the uh, the originators of of the cars. And, yeah. Uh, you know, trying to trying to make it work. Such a great original sound, you know, such a, just, it, 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 I mean, I guess it always said the same thing about Eddie Money. It really takes you back to a time when you first heard it. And these songs were so, it, you didn't hear anything else like them at the time. Well, yeah. I mean, I, when, I've, when I first heard Just What I Needed, I loved it instantly. Yes. And I went to Licorice Pizza to buy the record. And then I played the record and I did not like it. I didn't. I mean, I, I, it was weird to me. I didn't, couldn't get my head around. It was like, these are weird songs, like weird <laughs> beats. Something oh, is going like, you know, moving in stereo and, and, um, like I'm in touch with your world. Yeah. That actually, and, but now that's one of my feel. Like I'm in touch with your world. It's just kind of, I was listening to it the other day and it's just like a, it's like a slowed down Devo song and it's got like bells and whistles, you know, Greg Hawks, who <laughs> does the keyboards was doing like uh like all these sound effects and it's just a there's like that that crank sound you know just yep. making all these different noises and, and just weird lyrics like like I'm in touch with your world it's it's like um you know the Weisenheimer brainstorm <laughs> um you know I always thought yeah I thought I always thought Weisenheimer was like Another, like Einstein, like, oh, what are you? Weisenheimer? What are you, Einstein? What are you, Weisenheimer? What, but that, Weisenheimer is an actual word. It wasn't a person. Oh, what? no, I know, I know it wasn't a person, but I always thought it was just a smart ass. Yeah, kind of. But I okay. thought Weisenheimer was an actual person. That's so funny. Yeah. So no. Weisenheimer. Um, yeah, Weisenheimer. What was it? I'm a Sybil Simon pony. I'm a Sybil Simon pony. You're a Flick Fandango phony. Like, what the hell does that mean? What does it mean? Well, you didn't dig around. Psilocybin is a is a it's a mushroom. Mm-hmm. It's a psychedelic yes. mushroom. I'm in touch with the world. It's pretty much like a you know like a psychedelic I'm seeing trip. Everything. Yes, I'm in touch with you. So don't you try to hide it. Yeah. So I didn't get that, but it was like, what are these words? What's go? What is this? Um, so it took me a while to get into it, but I didn't give up on it for some reason. Um, I think I like Best Friends Girl, of course. Yeah. Um, but I, I kept playing it over and over, just like. There's something about it that kept me drawing me in, and now, I mean, it's next to the Pretenders, probably my favorite debut album of all time. Yeah, I mean, it was God. better than the Police or you know any of that stuff. But uh, can you pick a favorite song? I know. No, but I, I was listening to to other songs by by him, and there was 
there's like these little moments that I that I love. There's um, the song Heartbeat City. Mm-hmm. He's you know he's singing that uh, Jackie's back in town. But there's, a, <laughs> th- there's a thing he makes this little um, this little noise where he's thinking to himself. You know, like you make a noise and you like you think about something. And you make like mm, you know just like yeah. That. He does that. He's saying, you know, now that Jackie's back in town. And then he pauses and goes, hmm. And like, that's brilliant because, you know, like he's thinking about this girl and yeah. that was, it's just like a natural reaction. It's, this is, this is great. Oh, I have to go back and listen to that Yeah. Now. So that was, yeah, just really just a little touch that like sells it for me. Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I love that. Um, from the album Candio, there's, uh, I put, uh. There's a song called Got a Lot on My Head, and most of it is you. It's like, got a lot on my head. It's on my head. It shouldn't it be in your head? And then, you know, so then you think like, oh, well, maybe it's like thinking like it's way, it's weighing down on me. That's why it's a lot on yeah, my head. I never thought about that. You're so cerebral, Dave. Well, <laughs> I am. Because yes. I knew the meaning of it. <laughs> but I was just like, got a lot on my head. That's crazy. Yeah. It's funny. But um, yeah, so those were, I mean, those were like the, because I was going down listening to yeah. the playlist of songs, and those were the, the things that kind of stuck out immediately. He just had a, just a nice touch with with songs, and uh, you know, l- know. add little touches. He, you know, producer. He, he was yeah, a, he's a producer. You know, created Weezer's Blue and Green records. Yeah, do you know he produced Hanson also? Did he? Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Did you know he produced Never Say Never, Romeo Boy? Yes, I know. I did not know that before. Yeah. Yeah. But that and that was another thing. Um, I was listening to Sirius XMU, and they played um, Teenage FBI, and I was Janice was in the car, and I was listening to it. Like God, I love this indie pop stuff. This is just, I just yeah. love this song so much. And then you know they came on the air. A person came on the air and mentioned, yeah, you know, Rico Cassick produced that song. You know, produced the the song. Like, well, of course he did. This is a brilliant song. This is yeah. he guided by voices were like this indie lo-fi band and they were going for the big time i guess they made they're like and and rick kind of just brought brightened up this this album and it's one of my favorites they album uh, do the collapse teenage fbi surgical focus hold on hope mm-hmm. that was he was part of the band for this uh, this album because you know you hear these these touches that are clearly hit you know part of the cars or yeah. part of rick ocasek's sound um and so that that's i i well, I like, think to this day, it's, that's one of my favorite albums, as well as Weezer's. I mean, you know, I, I really appreciate that when a when a uh, an artist can impart when a producer who was an artist can impart their sound on the band, like uh, Jeff Lynn, yeah, for example, sure. where you know who who produced it. I think. I mean, some people have a problem with that. I think we've talked about that before, right. but I like it. I like no. I mean, yeah. No, obviously, I, if you I, like the artist, right? Yeah, a lot of people had a complaint about you know like a lot of people were like this is not guided by voices you know they're changing yeah. up their sound blah 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 like you know what they they have the potential to sound this great and uh yeah so that was uh, uh yeah I, I love that album yeah. um and uh, yeah he was a big fan of um suicide which is, and were you familiar with them like this duo no but uh, yeah. i did see that i didn't know them yeah dream baby dream is a is an album is a song that actually springsteen covers now he sings in uh He'll just show a lot, most of his shows. He covers oh. that song. But yeah, Rick uh, produced that. And he was kind of like a, I guess, a mentor for the band. Because I remember reading interviews with him. He always mentioned this band, Suicide. He seemed to really love love what they did. And so he kind of, you know, helped in, in as much a way as he could. Oh, that's, I like that. I like yeah. hearing that. I like. Uh... Yeah. And obviously he had a sense of humor too, that uh, Colbert. <laughs> Did you? He was on the Colbert Report a couple times. Yes, I have do, seen him doing like certain uh, man on the street type yeah. things. It's <laughs> great. It's so funny his way, his his droll. You know, just his oh, his manner. Certain, very droll, yeah. and just kind of like, what is just a weird looking guy, weird delivery. Yeah, which is probably why I didn't like it at first. Like you know, just like what yeah. is this? What's going on here? But uh, weird looking guy gets the supermodel. He certainly does. <laughs> I know. They, they're like, all right, we're not good looking. We're not going to put ourselves on the cover. Because I know yeah. I looked at on, on the debut album. It was uh, Natalia Medvedga. Natalia Medveva was, uh, that's, she was the. That uh, was the model? Yes. Oh. 
This is the album which oh. I brought. Natalia Ned- Medvedeva. Okay. Natalia Medvedeva. So he liked the foreign ladies. Apparently. Well, <laughs> yeah. We'll put the band in the back. And you can barely see yeah. Rick in the back. Yeah. He is like looming in the back. You got to put the, who's the good looking guy? Ben? More. Yeah. Well, I like Rick Ocasek's look. I always have. Oh, it was a great look. Yeah. Not, not classically good looking, but I could have no. happily have seen him on the cover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, actually, I loved actually the five pictures of the band. In the, yeah. I'm taking out the, I have the album that I actually bought. Yeah. So. Yes, I, I, this is so 80s, even though I know it was 70, right? Yeah. No, they were so, they were ahead of the time. They, yeah. They had this, it was a classic rock, but it was new wave. It was, you know. Oh, we're going to post this. This is uh, awesome. I, it was like the, you know, like the police. Yeah. You know. Yes. <laughs> you know, classic rock, but also, you know, firmly in the future, their sound. And uh, it was really nice. Yeah. This was, I think, I, as I was reading, as I look on the back, this was originally supposed to be the cover. David Robinson, oh. the uh, was uh, the drummer for the band. He he kind of designed the cover, but the band uh, the label is like, no, it's <laughs> well, busy. It's too yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we'll uh, post the inside. And Ben Orr says he he did not like this uh, cover. Really? Yeah, it's like that smiling face. It's yeah. too too much. Because um, <laughs> they're not a smiley band. <laughs> yeah, and then of course I think of uh, Candio. Yeah, which was one that I spent hours staring yep. at. Because <laughs> <laughs> they, they they understood me, I don't want to look at the band. I could look, let's, but it's, I mean today it sounds like as I was thinking about it, it was like a, a Spinal Tap type thing. You want to put a a, <laughs> a woman in a leotard on laying on her back on a car? <laughs> sounds ex- so white snake. Totally exposed, and you want that to be your cover? Well, yeah. Don't you, don't you think? <laughs> Don't you think it's sexy? Sexist? Well, there's nothing wrong with being sexy. Anyway, <laughs> anyway I'm replaying yes. my own si- Spinal Tap uh, scenario. <laughs> but yeah, it says uh, as I was reading that you know it was created by Alberto Vargas. The he created uh, the cover. He, he got he, the he, pronunciation he, right. Yeah, I know. I'm, well, or you could say Alberto he, Vargas. Oh, okay. uh, Alberto Vargas. Very nice. <laughs> he used to he painted pinups for Playboy and Esquire. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He was retired, and then David Robinson, he contacted him. He was 83 at the time. He'd been retired for several years, but he persuaded him to take the assignment by his niece, who was a fan of the band. Mm-hmm. Um, and that happens a lot, where someone will get involved with the band that their kid their kid is yeah, interested in. Totally. Yeah. The painting depicted a woman sprawled across the hood of a Ferrari 365 GTC4. It was based on a photo directed by Robinson at a Ferrari dealership, the model, coincidentally named Candy Moore, famous for having played Lucille Ball's on-screen daughter on the Lucille Show, on the Lucy Show, which I did not know. No. Here's this is the, the next shocking statement. You you ready to hear this shocking statement? Yes. Afterwards, Candy Moore dated David Robinson for a while. Oh. <laughs> Big surprise! Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, rock stars and models. Who knew? Who yeah, knew they go so well together. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. But that was, uh, yeah, they met, Paulina met Rick. On the uh, video, on the video for Drive, right? Drive. The video shoot. Yeah. Yeah. It worked out well. Yeah. They, were, they were together for 28 years. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, but they still seem like they had a good, you know, at least what yeah, was good shown to the public, a good relationship, as, you know, shit happens uh, after that much As far time. as I know, yeah. I mean, you Did, know, so, so yeah, so they they still saw each other, apparently. Yeah. You know, I guess they, you know, had kids together and, yeah. you know. Do you know he had a lot of kids? I, I have no idea. <laughs> I think he had, uh, yeah, he had four other children from two previous marriages. So I guess a total oh, of six okay. kids. I did not know he was married. Uh, you know what? He was probably, he had their Sarder marriage, I'm sure, <laughs> before he became a rock star. Usually that's it. She she pays for the groceries and helps support him. And then they beca- he became big and, you know. He finds somebody else and somebody then, he, else. then he fell in love with a supermodel. We yeah. just made up a whole life story I'm for sure, him. Well, it's a familiar story. Yeah. Did you remember that they lost out the best new artist? I did see that. Did, did, I did not remember that, but I, yeah, I, I just saw it recently. But it's funny. Who did they lose out to? A taste of honey. Boogie boogie. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know what to say about that. I love the song. I love the song boogie boogie. boogie but sure. best new artist. How do you? You know. I know. Come on. That's funny. Yeah, I remember actually when the set when Candy O came out for the first. You know, 
and I heard it on 64 KFI. I heard the the first mm-hmm. single was Let's Go, but I, I didn't know the name of the, ti- the title of the song. I thought it was I Love the Nightlife, yeah. but I was thinking, well, that's, Alicia that's, a song Bridges. By, that's a song by Alicia Bridges. I, can you do that? I didn't know that. So I remember calling them up asking for, can you play I Love the Nightlife by <laughs> the Cars? Not the lead, by the, you know, like. And did the person the, on the phone know the, what you were talking about? Desperately. <laughs> Like, you know, that news, cause it just got like, there's a new song, but you know, like I'm of course freaking out because yes. I'm talking, first of all, I'm talking to a radio station and you know, and it's a new song by the cars. Like you've got to play this. It's great. And so that's <laughs> really funny. That's yeah. it. I guess I still remember that. Yeah. I love the light. I love the nightlife, baby. I, I love the, I love the boogie. On yeah. the disco. Oh. I love that song. Oh, yeah. That's a good song. <laughs> Not as good as let's go. No. Uh, it, also known as I Love the Nightlife. I Love the Nightlife. I Love the <laughs> It has clapping in it. Yeah. Wait, do you really like to boogie? Let's go. What? Do you really love to boogie? Who doesn't love to boogie? <laughs> still. 2019, still boogieing. Yes. Say that to your kids. Ugh. Try it. I dare you. Yeah, I do. Of course. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's wrap up this, uh, this app. Do you think we've adequately, adequately expressed our appreciation for the cars? Uh, and Rico Kasich. Well, we tried. I think we had we our personal our touch as much as we could. Uh, we will have a Spotify playlist up for the for both artists. Yeah, we're gonna have to fight about which songs we want to. Well, I mean, you could add songs. That's fine. That's that's Thank the you. beauty of Spotify. You could add and subtract songs if you like. Uh, you. We can. Yeah, let's add on. Uh, let's do this. Uh, do the the uh, quiz deck. The eighties. We're now calling the eighties music trivia quiz book. Okay, let's do the quiz book now. I, I think have you to ask me. It. Right. Okay, so I'm asking you all of these quiz two questions. They are they are six. Wait, let's see. Ooh, there's ten questions. Do you want to ask me all ten? I'm asking you all ten. Let's okay. see. Um, How fast? Okay. Which of these albums by the Eurythmics was released first? Sweet dreams are made of this. Touch. Revenge. Revenge. I am sorry. Oh, sweet dreams. Oh, sweet dreams. Okay. Who released the song Burning Heart in 1985? Survivor. Survivor. <laughs> that is correct. Which of these songs released by the group Duran Duran was released first? I Don't Want Your Love, The Reflex, or Notorious? Reflex? Correct. Two for three. Yay me. Uh, and what year did ABBA release the album Super Trooper? 1980, 1982, 1983. 82. Incorrect. 1980. Two for four. Who released the song Nikita in 1985? Elton John. Oh, well, there we go. Three for five. Um, who had a hit in 1984 with the song When Doves Cry? <laughs> I'm sorry, I did not hear what you said. Prince. Okay, please enunciate when you talk into Prince. It. Okay, thank you. Prince Rogers Nelson. Let me look that up. That is correct. All right, four for six. Pretend you don't know. Okay. Who played the drums in the group Van Halen? Was it Michael Anthony, Eddie Van Halen, Alex Van Halen? Michael Anthony. That is incorrect. Alex. <gasps> Alex! Oh, sh- <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No. Alex okay. Van Halen. Fun fact, Eddie was the drummer first for the band. I did not know that. Yeah. Here's oh another God. fun fact. Michael never played drums. <laughs> he, he, he played the Jack Daniels bass. Oh, is that true? <laughs> yeah, it was like a bass shape like Jack Daniels bottle. Like oh, the Jack, bottle. Like yes. Dan- <laughs> like who the, f- who the hell is Jack Daniels? <laughs> <sighs> Try my patience, Holly. Yeah, you know, showing my re- go. Move along. <laughs> Moving along. Okay, just move it along. Next question, please. All right. The song "Every Breath You Take" was released by which group? The Police. Please let me finish by. Really? No. Can we can move it along faster right. if I yes. just answer the question? That's correct. Okay, we're five <laughs> for eight. Which song by the group Foreigner begins with the phrase "I got to take a little time, a little time to think things over"? Should I say? Okay. You give me the choices. And that was yesterday. I want to know what love is. Waiting for a girl like you. Waiting for a girl like you? No. Oh, I want to know what love is. Yes. <laughs> All right. This is your five for nine. Uh-oh. Let's see if we can get a deep. I'm not very good at this. Let's see if you can get. <laughs> I'm showing that I really don't know that much about music. And going for 60%. Let's see. What, <laughs> what's, That's a D. <laughs> what song by Tina Turner has a chorus that contains the phrase, all we want is 
is life beyond the Thunderdome. What's love got to do with it? Typical male. We don't need another hero. We don't need another hero. That is correct. Congratulations. <laughs> Six out of ten. Yay. I got Yay. a D. All right. D <laughs> equals degree. You get a degree in 80s. That's true. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Holly. And thank you, thank you everyone for listening. Yes. Um, where can you find us? You can find us on Facebook if you're old, and okay. you might be. Okay. At uh, What Difference Does It Make Podcast. Okay. You can find us on Instagram, WDDIM Podcast, and you can find us on Twitter, WDDIM Podcast. So please do. Like us. Give us give us some thoughts. We need thoughts. We need to fill our head with more Obvi- thoughts. Obviously, because, you know, 60% isn't going to cut it. I suck. <laughs> I'm going to study this week. I'm going to know a lot more about music when I come back next week. Excellent. All right. So then until next week, this is Dave. This is Holly. Check you later. Over and out.